Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, in this video, I'm gonna share with you game development tools that you may want to use to interface with your game engine. So let's begin. My name is Jairo Serrano and I develop a 3D game engine completely from scratch. And I'm here to share with you everything I know about game engine development. So what do I mean by interfacing with game development tools? Well, a game engine requires external data such as mesh data to be able to render a 3D game character. It also needs data to render a sprite or a sprite animation and data to render text. Um, so your game engine uh, requires a way to interact with these tools in order to retrieve the data that it needs to be able to render the content on your screen. Now, one of the main tools that I use is Blender 3D. Uh, if you are completely new to uh, Blender, uh, let me give you a brief explanation. Uh, Blender is basically a 3D modeling software tool, uh, very popular among game artists uh, and game developers. It is not only used to design uh, game characters, but also to do rigging and animations. Now, um, as game engine developers, what we are interested from Blender is the mesh data of the character. And by mesh data, I mean the vertices, the normal vectors, the UV coordinates, etc. So how can you retrieve the mesh data from Blender? Well, Blender provides an option that you can use to export that data uh, in a Colada format. However, when I tried to parse the data, I found the process too convoluted and too cumbersome. So what I did was to write my own script using the Blender API and Python. The script basically uh, retrieves the vertices, the normal vectors, the animation data from Blender into a file in XML format. Now, if you are interested in writing your own script, um, I wrote a tutorial on my blog where I show you step-by-step -step on how to do that. I'm gonna leave a link to my article in the description below. Now, aside from 3D game characters, you also want to uh, support sprites and animation. And the tool that I use to create uh, sprites is called Texture Packer. It is not free, but it is worth it. Now, this tool uh, will generate two sets of data. Uh, it will create an image file containing the sprite atlas and an XML file containing the uh, coordinates and um, dimensions of your sprites. You will have to provide these two sets of data to your game engine. Now, in the second section of the video, I'm gonna share with you the libraries that you can use uh, to decode the image and to post the XML file. So just keep watching. Now, aside from sprites, you will also want to uh, render fonts. Um, and the tool that I use to uh, create fonts is called Glyph Designer. This tool, uh, this tool, again, is not free, but it's totally worth it. And just like Texture Packer, it will generate two set of files. One, an image file containing the font atlas, and the other, an XML file containing the name, uh, the coordinates, and the dimension of each letter of your font. Now you may be wondering, is there a library that you can use to parse the XML file provided by Blender, by Texture Packer, and by Glyph Designer? Well, yes, there is. And the library that I use is called TinyXML. I strongly recommend you to use it because it is small, simple, and it does the job very well. Now, every time that you want to render an image, uh, whether that is a, a texture, a sprite atlas, or a font atlas, you need to decode that image into a format that the game engine will understand. Um, and the library that I use to decode the, an image is called Load PNG. Again, just like Tiny XML, I strongly recommend you to use this nice little library. So those are the main tools and libraries that I use uh, day to day with my game engine. However, um, there are other tools that I don't necessarily interface with my game engine, but I have found them very useful to use and I wanna share them with you. One of those tools is called a Crazy Bump and this tool will generate a normal map, occlusion map, uh, etc. 
um, all of these maps will be provided into an image file that you can later uh, decode using a uh, load PNG. Um, I have found it very useful, especially when I want to test uh, my um, how my game engine is rendering normal maps. Now, this other tool that I'm going to share with you is simply amazing. Um, I cannot say that enough. This tool called Tiny PNG will uh, compress your image texture and reduce their file size, um, which is ideal when it comes to game engines because you do not want an image that consumes too much memory space. To use it is very simple. You simply drag your image onto the placeholder and after a few seconds, you will receive a compressed version of your image. And the cool part is this, you will not notice the difference in quality between the two images. It is amazing and I strongly recommend you to use this tool. And that's all what I have for you guys today. I hope this uh, video was useful to you. I hope you now you have an idea of what tools are there available uh, for you that you can use in your game engine and what type of libraries you can actually uh, interact with. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.